So we need to increase our exports. Uh, <clears throat> what it means for the Philippines is we need to increase two-way trade. And both countries need to understand that exports and imports create jobs. Yes. Um, we are a major producer of food and beverage for the Philippines. The Philippines is in the top ten in the world in American food and beverage products as also and health care products. Um, but even if they're coming from America, somebody has to take them off the ship. Somebody yes. has to load them. Somebody has to sell them. That touches Filipino jobs. Similarly, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting ready to have Dole Bananas go to the U.S. President Obama and President Aquino signed an agreement earlier this year to fast-track banana, banana sales in response to economic coercion. Right. So we want to make sure that everybody understands two-way trade is beneficial to, to both of our nations. And that's what's going to change the, the Philippines as it changes the United States. You have to have economic security uh, and invest in human capital. We need to do more of that in the United States. Clearly, our public school systems, we need to invest in vocational education, mm -hmm. training people for, for modern jobs, understanding that uh, a lot of those jobs that have gone away are not coming back. So instead of whining over the, how do we get science, math, the technical skills that you need to compete in, in a modern world. At the same time, if those jobs are coming to the Philippines, don't rest on your laurels. Also invest in the same things. Yes. Because those jobs can leave the Philippines and go to a cheaper place in a generation or less. Um, also, because we saw that in the United States. They, they were, those jobs were in the Northeast, the textiles. They went to North Carolina and South Carolina. Now they're in Asia, but there's no reason. Um, Africa's the fastest growing economies. Look at Rwanda and Uganda. Why not go there? So prepare your population by investing in human capital. Uh, your life and my life are very different because we were able to get excellent education. Yes. And <clears throat> we but know. But it was a public school. I went, to, I went to public school. Yeah. I went to Brooklyn Technical High School, uh, Engineering High School. Tom's River High School North. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. The wealthiest public high school in the country. I'm very proud of that. Oh, wow. When I went there, there were 6,000 boys and two girls. Those girls did not do engineering. Now there are more girls than boys. And it's real, real progress. But Americans actually are saying that the public school system hasn't, has really declined. Is that well, it depends where you are. Clearly, forever, yeah. the poorer communities have always had a worse public school system. Yeah. And I don't care where that is. Yes. Okay? Um, the difference is before the Catholics and some Protestants went to parochial schools that were good, the wealthy had their schools, the public schools educated all of us. Now, a lot of people, as they get into the upper middle class, are sending their children to private schools, and the public schools have to fend uh, for themselves. But look at competition. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I have a relative, uh, Daniel, uh, my brother-in-law's brother, Jeff Canada. Uh, he's a Bowdoin and Harvard graduate. He started something called the Harlem Children's Zone. Mm -hmm. And what have they proved? If he gets a kid in kindergarten, he can get that kid to, into Bowdoin or Harvard. Mm -hmm. Uh, $25 million school in Harlem uh, with funds from his hedge fund classmates at Bowdoin and Harvard and Ken Chenault, who was his roommate, the yeah. head of American Express. Uh, you need that. You yes. can't pretend that those networks and that cash do, do not matter. But he, if he gets a kid in kindergarten, he can educate them. Gets a kid in ninth grade, it's much harder. Mm -hmm. okay? And he has, to com he has to compete with the thugs. So it, when a kid gets an A, he gives them money instead of a certificate. Because so that kid is not um, enticed by the drug dealer. Right. Okay? So you have to know your, know your environment. And, and uh, Jeff is uh, subject of a documentary, Waiting for Superman, but he's not the only Superman. They have proved that there's, you can educate every child. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a lot harder sometimes when you don't have two parents. Yes. Uh, clearly, that's the case. Uh, but look at the revival of City College of New York. Mm -hmm. well, how was it revived? Through the immigrants who are coming. And look, I'm from Queens. The Queens Public Library is now the most utilized public library in the United States. And it's because of the immigrant community. 
hungry for education, mm -hmm. for, for, for jobs. So we have to translate that also to Americans who were born in the United States. Uh, we, have, we have many, many challenges, but mm -hmm. I see those same things. The challenges of poor single mothers trying to educate children, whether it's in Tondo or Harlem, are the same. The failure rates are the same. Um, the recidivism rates are the same. So how do we change that? Do you change that into a full investment? Mm -hmm. Jeff gives, gives those kids breakfast and lunch. They do their homework before they go home. But their mothers want them to get educated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sadly, we also know their parents that don't spend a lot of time on that. Um, Philippines has a challenge. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of ATM moms. Yes. And although they can send money home, you know, and I know, it's not the same thing as having the parents in the house. We're starting to get broken families. Right. You know, this is and that has tremendous social costs. Social cost. impact, yeah. Really. Well, let me go back to yeah. the, the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, are we seeing an America in decline? Not to me. I've never, <laughs> never believed that. I think uh, you always go through challenges. America's uh, genius is ability to reinvent, reinvent itself. This is a, a hard way to go because the challenges are different. But what am I happy about? We've won. Our way of life is what people around the world are trying to replicate. Yes. Uh, China may be authoritarian, but it's not communist and, and it's, and it's business-like. Same thing throughout Asia, throughout yes. Latin America. Free markets. That's yeah. right. Now, we have to translate those free markets into freedom of press, freedom, human rights freedom, gender equality, all of those things have to be translated. But that's what the world is trying to, to do. I think the reason we have so many people on our visa lines is because they see, still see economic opportunity. They still see it. What we like to see in the Philippines is Jose Rizal. Mm. We like to see people go to the United States for education if they like that, go to Europe, and then come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As as Jose Rizal did to yes. help their to help their nation, and I think that's uh, possible. We're going to be working with the Philippine government to provide you with more people getting masters and doctorates, because we see the universities here. The number of uh, doctoral candidates is pretty low now. A lot of the uh, professors have emigrated. We don't want to see a decline in the outstanding universities, be it the University of the Philippines or, or Silliman and other places. So we, Governor of the Philippines, is going to invest a lot of money, USAID, and the Philippine, uh, we hope the Philippine diaspora. Fantastic. And trying to uh, help that. And my uh, AID director, Ms. Steele, has told me we're going to find a way to make sure these kids stay here. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, my last large group, sure. my last questions really is on security now. Sure. So it's 11 years mm. after 9-11, a decade after Bali. And to me, it just seems that the threats continue. They just keep evolving. Mm. Um, you had on 9-11 this year, mm. the, the attack on Benghazi, yes, uh, the U.S. Yes. Ambassador, yes, Chris yes. Stevens was killed. Yeah. Uh, along with three others, and then, and then just this weekend we had uh, 11 terrorists arrested in, in Indonesia. Indonesia. Um, they were they had another plot against the U.S. embassy. Uh, how does this? What does the threat look like today? We always, as President Aquino said, have to be vigilant. Um, there are some who would do both of our nations harm, and we have to catch them and make sure they do not have the ability to do that. Whether it's Osama bin Laden, or members of Abu Sayyaf, or Jamia Islamia, or the young man who was uh, uh, from Bangladesh, who was just arrested in New York. New York, yes. Uh, so this is a global problem. He was know. supposedly linked to Al-Qaeda, or he seems well, to be um, you know, unclear. Well, to Al-Qaeda, as you know, is loose links. Um, yes. Clearly, clearly loose, loose links. Okay. Uh, but he subscribed to, to their knowledge. philosophy, yeah. and that's what you're talking about in your book. Correct. Um, how people can use the internet uh, to to spew hate yeah. and to get people to want to do these heinous crimes against innocent, innocent people. So we have to be vigilant, understanding that we're going to have, unfortunately, incidents in in Benghazi. Okay. I wish I could say that no embassy would ever be attacked again. Um, 
I wish I could say that no part of New York or Manila would not be attacked again, but the likelihood is that is going to happen, but we've got to work to prevent it. We have to work to prevent it. Um, and that requires a lot of education, a lot of investment, in, uh, and it, it's a balance. How do you keep the freedom in the internet that we love, the, uh, protect privacy, and at the, at the same time, give safety and security to your people? It's, it's a major challenge that we have to face, uh, but it is something that we, we need to do together. Uh, the United States is working with the Philippines and our other allies on a daily basis to, uh, to keep all of us safe. Uh, that's our number one job. Uh, but it's, it's going to continue to be a challenge. But I'm confident. Uh, the Philippines has a very good security service. We work very closely with them. Uh, it's full cooperation. And uh, hindsight can always be 20-20, but I think we have a, a good working relationship. Fantastic. Last question, back to elections, sure. uh, to go through it. Um, either you, you talked briefly about mm. both Obama mm. and Romney and the impact on Asia. So mm. You say far, foreign mm. policy will stay the same. I mean, what will change, if anything, I guess, depending on who wins, but what will change, if anything, post-November? <coughs> well, clearly, Republicans and Democrats look at uh, uh, choice mm -hmm. in a different manner. Very. That's... Uh, clearly something. They look at taxes in a, in a different manner. Uh, President Obama said he wanted to raise taxes on the, on the wealthy and uh, then cut programs. President-elect, uh, if he's elected, Romney is saying that he wants to cut taxes for, 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 for everyone. Um, those are tremendous philosophical uh, uh, differences and we'd have to see how they will play out because uh, Congress has a role in that. Uh, is not a dictator. Congress has to agree to that. I expect that it'll still be close Congress on, on both sides, uh, but they have to do some, some work. We want to see uh, them work on behalf of the American people. Uh, at the same time, this Congress has been quite generous to the Philippines. Our AID budget has actually gone up. We've increased the number of Peace Corps volunteers. Yes. We have that Millennium Challenge Corporation program. That we waited to ensure that we had an honest government to sign the, the compact with. Uh, we have increased our military assistance and police assistance. So all of that's happened because of uh, Congress mm -hmm. and uh, the support that President Obama and Secretary Clinton and the others mm -hmm. have been able to, to get out of uh, Congress. So I'm optimistic about both of our uh, both of our nations I think we're on the right trajectory it would be foolish to say it's going to be easy um, uh, that's not going to happen mm -hmm. it's not going to happen in any country every country has domestic challenges yes. and they have to we have to figure out how mm -hmm. but you know Maria I always believe that education analysis reason and look at look at how things have changed mm -hmm. not only do we have a Mormon running against an African American we have a president of the United States who's come out for gay marriage. That's not an issue Huge. in this election. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, exactly. Nobody is saying anything against it. Um, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, nobody would have in, in, envisioned that. Um, the military, which has always been our leader, the military led in desegregation, the military led in having, uh, putting women in leadership positions. Now the women, the, the military is leading in gender rights. Okay, and it's not an issue; it's just not. Mm. So, how far have have we come on things that people just don't look at? Yes. Uh, clearly, because of the internet and uh, ability to polarize, some people you're always going to have extremists on the, the right and left. But I think most people are reasonable in in both of our nations, uh, and and that's what I, I want. I think I'm I'm always sad when I hear people in the Philippines say, "I wish we could trade our." freedoms for economic prosperity. Well, I think you can have both, and uh, I don't think Filipinos or Americans would want to trade in our, our democracy or freedom. Too okay. hard for it. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. We've been speaking with U.S. Ambassador Harry Thomas to the Philippines. We stay tuned to the U.S. elections. It's going to be a close race. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for joining us.